This is my Epson HX20. I got it on eBay and um, I want to see if I can get it working. I bought it parts for parts or repair. And it came with the charger. It uh, seems to be in good shape. It um, the, the cable is getting a little hard but it's not cracked or anything. It looks pretty clean. Um, pretty cool little printer. It's called the world's first laptop or first uh, truly portable computer. It's neat. It has a um, a little thermal printer over here and an LCD screen and it has a little cassette drive that goes over here. Uh, the batteries in it are dead. I did get it to cut on for a couple seconds and um, I haven't been able to get it to cut on again but but uh, there's a big black block right here that's um not working. So uh, I ordered some batteries. And they're NICAD batteries, sub C size, and uh, so we'll have to build a battery pack that should be in in a couple days. But um, go ahead and pull it apart and see if there's any obvious reason why the LCD screen's not working. And also, the LCD screen is very dirty. I'm hoping we can clean that discoloration. It may not be, but we can hopefully at least get the the stuff out of it. So I imagine we'll find some battery corrosion or something inside of it. Maybe some loose connections. So let's pull it apart and see what we see. So here's the bottom of it. There's the battery pack. I don't see any obvious, you know, liquid around it or anything, but there's definitely some signs of corrosion. Uh, there's some a little bit of rust there. Yeah, there's some some kind of liquid there, and you can see that screw right there is rusted. Also, if you look in the um, front, definitely some residue there, and the power port's very green. So I have to clean that out. I have to get this uh, cover off here and see what's under there. And here's the top part. This is where the keyboard and the display is. So if we look on here, this is the rib. It it looks pretty good, but here's the ribbon cable to the um, LCD screen, and it's dark. In fact, it looks like maybe something got on it and leached into it. And if you look really close, let me zoom in. I believe that there is a break in the copper right there. So that's probably why our LCD screen isn't working. So we want to clean this out anyway, so we need to take that off. But I'm going to go ahead and take this cover off the bottom so we can see if there's any more damage because that's where the liquid would have would have pulled kind of around this area. And so I got the screws out. Let's pull this off. It's pretty nasty right there. It looks fine. So uh, yeah the screws are corroded. Nothing looks obvious on the board other than that right there where it's rusty. So hopefully the acid just kind of got over here. Um, can't see any of the components, so I think I need to pull the board the rest of the way out. And the battery terminal's not coming off easy, so it might be corroded on there, so I'll have to play with that. So I'll take the PC board out and flip it over and take a look at it. Alright, so I got the screws out. See there's some corrosion on these pins too, so I'll have to clean that up. Let's flip it over. Let's see. Yeah, everything looks really clean. Except for right there where the the rust was. Oh, and these pins are pretty. Got some gunk on them. I'll have to go over that real close and uh, see if I see anything wrong. There's some capacitors on here that should probably replace. I'm not going to do that right now and see if this thing even works. But um, I'm going to clean that up and uh, clean this up and inspect around around that rust to make sure there's no broken traces. If there are, I'll show you and try to get that battery terminal off. I did get the battery off. You can see it's corroded pretty bad and that's, a, that's why I was having trouble coming off so hopefully that'll clean up. 
If not, we'll have to replace it with something. So, we'll finish cleaning this thing off and see what we have. Alright, so I've been going at this thing with some soap and water with a really fine wire brush try to get that rust off this is a good tool it uh, doesn't doesn't mess the board up any but it uh, will take the rust off and of course my uh, PC board scrubbing tool and um, here over here is another one of those pads so it looks like it is a plated through hole with copper on either side and um, and this is the one I've been cleaning it's definitely discolored but um, it doesn't look like it's going through the copper so I'm going to keep cleaning it try to get down to the copper these uh, solder joints all look good they just had some um, some corrosion built up on top of them and I might hit them with a the soldering iron because they're a bit questionable I don't think we've had any actual board damage which is good though this side came really clean so I'm going to work on that a little more and I'll probably end up taking these to the sink and washing them with some soap and water so let's uh let's go back to this other piece. This needs to be cleaned. I'm kind of hesitant just to put this in the water because it's got a lot of cool paper labels and stuff on it, and I don't want to mess them up. So I'll probably just scrub them down real good with a paper towel. And uh, actually, yeah, there's the label on the back. So onto this part. Need to clean some rust off of there. Other than that, I mean, everything's really looking good. I, I think this is going to be fun. Let's see, fix this trace right here and put a battery in it. So I'm not going to pull the keyboard apart right now. If it uh, doesn't work, we will. But um, I'm going to pull the LCD module out so we can look at this ribbon cable here. The way these ribbon cables come out is you pop this tab up right here and then they just slide out like that. So hopefully this will come out. Good. So we'll be able to clean that off in this. Can't get inside there. It looks like maybe a water or corrosion or something got inside there. Might try to take this cover off a bit in those tabs. See if we can clean that a little bit. But it was working. You could see it. So figure that out when we'll try we'll start trying to do it and see how it goes but we definitely need to fix that and I need to clean the corrosion off of this so it won't get any worse I can't really tell how bad this ribbon cable is and it's not something I can easily remove from the board so what I think I'm gonna do I've started scrubbing it a little bit with the wire brush and it's taking this blue coating off I think I'm gonna keep doing that and see if I can at least get the dark areas where it's contaminated off because I imagine that's just gonna keep getting worse if I don't get that stuff off. So I'm going to use Alan Jackson here to help me. So I'm going to scrub away at that and see if I can get some of some of that off so I can get a better idea of what's going on. Well that cleaned up pretty nice which is good because I'm sure that stuff was going to eat away at the copper but unfortunately the place I thought was bad is right there and though it is kind of eating away at it it's not a uh, definitely not through so I don't think that's the issue down here where it's bonded to the board there are some uh, traces sticking out the end there so I'm gonna get my, my ohm meter and measure each pin to there and make sure that they are getting good connection not easy to get because I'm just trying to grab the very tip of the trace where the conformal coating is 
been removed. That one's good. That's good. Okay, so all those are good. So I didn't, probably didn't fix anything there. Unless, uh, unless maybe the, uh, stuff on there was conductive. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna pull these tabs off and see if I can get this cover off, see if we can clean that up a little bit. Okay, I probably shouldn't mess with this. I used to take these apart when I was a kid. But I can tell that the back silver is actually discolored. At least that's what it looks like. So these little rubber strips here have little conduct conductive pass through them. So what you do is you lay them across a strip like that. And then there's little conductive pieces or conductive, I guess, wires on the back of this uh, glass here, and it presses down against it and makes the connection. So um, it's really not the kind of thing you mess with, but looks like I'm just going to do it. So I don't think you could take this apart or anything, but hopefully I can clean it up. There's a, a couple of plastic sheets on the front, I think, and they're like the polarized films. Or maybe there's one on the top and one in between it, so we can't get to those, but... I'm going to at least try to peel this this uh, shiny piece, this reflective piece off the back and see if that's something we can clean or maybe I can replace. So I ended up heating the, the foil on the back up with my heat gun and it peeled off and you can see that's that discoloration. This is an adhesive on the back. I glued it to it and I'm guessing the adhesive is what kind of discolored. It looked like it was already peeling away from the edges so I guess that's where the adhesive still was. So I'm going to see if I can clean the adhesive off with like some alcohol or something I guess I'll have to glue it back on there uh, you can see there is some kind of discoloration in there I'm, these films these uh, polarizing films are not laying flat anymore I'm hesitant just to mess with that too much because uh, I feel like I'm just going to make it either not work or worse but I'm maybe I can try to Get it to flatten back down. Uh, the screen was working before. I don't. I don't know if I've destroyed it at this point, but um. But uh, let's see if I can at least clean it up and put it back together. Hopefully, I can get that that uh that discoloration off of there. So I've been working on this, and I got the adhesive off of places, and that's it's just whatever this is. Maybe it's aluminum or something. It's just become discolored. So what I think I'm going to do, it's just, as far as I know, it's just a reflective surface. I might cut a piece of mylar and put it back there. I think that might work. And then, um, and I did heat the film up a little bit and squish it down, and it's a lot less bubbly. The surface is rough. I don't, rough, I don't know if that's just how this material was back then or if it's actually changed but where it's rough is where you kind of see a blue color like it's distorting the light a little bit I'm hesitant to mess with that too much because that was working before so at this point I think I'm going to put that together and just <laughs> give this thing any chance of surviving maybe we'll revisit that so I've put a piece of tape down here I was going to lay this over it Kind of second guessing it. It's that crease right there, and there's not a whole lot I can do about it because of the way the sheets are folded. Uh, I might go back to the aluminum tape idea. Let me see if I can find a piece of aluminum tape and see how it looks. All right, so here's the piece I originally pulled off the back, and here's a piece of aluminum tape. And 
It might be more reflective. It certainly has a pattern on it. I don't know if you'd see that through the LCD screen. It's not as nice as the back. I'm going to just use the back. That's messed up too. I'm going to cut that out and stick it on there. We'll see how it does. Well, there's the tape on there. I wouldn't say it looks great. But, um, I think we should put it together and see if it even works. I got it back together. I don't know if there's any chance that's going to work. The, um, I cleaned this trim up as good as I could. It's just, uh, pitted. I'm not sure that it's actually pushing down the LCD onto those little rubber strips. So we may have to put some, uh, spacer material behind this trim to kind of push down on it but um I've already done enough weird things to this so I think I'm going to stop on it for now and move on to something else we need to see if we can get this thing powered up and see if the screen works at all so let me look around and see if there's a way we can do that probably just feed 5 volts into the battery input but um I'm wondering if I can put these PC boards together in a way where we can actually uh, get it functional enough to see if it's operating. So I'm going to work on that and I'll be back. I started touching up these solder joints that were so corroded and uh, you can see those these I managed to get alright. These, I mean it's like the pins are so corroded the solder doesn't want to even touch them. So like I said I kept scrubbing them with the wire brush and hitting them with flux remover and I got some of them too but I may end up having to remove those and just really clean the pins off and so I'm going to go ahead and cut this battery pack apart so we can get this wire out of here we'll need that for, to build the new battery pack anyways but we can use it right now to power this thing up Yeah, those are pretty nasty. I don't even know if that wire was connected. That one was barely connected. I imagine those are bad. So we can strip these out. I'll hang them out the bottom of the machine and that way we can um, put 5 volts on there. Or 4.8. Those wires are definitely not copper colored. Okay, I'll put this together a little more. Okay, right, so I think I got enough stuff hooked up where we should be able to power it. There may be some grounds, some screws that need to be installed to a complete ground pass, but um, anyway, we'll give it a try. It's getting late, so I'll do this and then uh, at least we'll see what we're up against at this point. So I'll go ahead and cut the power switch on. I got 4.8 volts on here. So I'll attach it to these wires. I don't see anything there. Actually, I don't know if that power switch is actually connected to anything. Since the case is off. Yeah, it's not getting anything. Uh, the screen, it doesn't necessarily mean the screen's not working. It, uh, it should be beeping and stuff. So, um, you may have to have batteries. You may not be able to do what I'm doing right now. Just kind of guessing. It is pulling. Let's see. Yeah, it's pulling 130 milliamps no matter what, which is kind of weird. Yeah, let me look back over it. I may not have something connected. Okay, I figured out I can kind of lay it open like this. I definitely didn't have that ribbon cable on all the way, and you can see this one isn't either. In fact, I don't know if you can actually see in there. 
pins weren't even touching the ribbon cable contact, so that no way that was going to work. Still not getting anything. The power switch isn't changing the current on the power supply, so I mean... Yeah, these connections are really bad. I see the current jumping all over the place just from just from touching these. Well, I'm tired. I'll work on this again another day. All right, it's a new day. I got uh, batteries in. So we can build us a battery pack. And I went online and I think vintagecomputer.net. I'll put a link in the description, but um found some schematics on there for everything. So I'm gonna start tracing the power on here. Figure out what's doing what. So don't really seem to be getting anything. Yesterday when I first cut it on, it uh I could hear a little sizzling noise. I don't know if it showed up on the video, I didn't hear it right away. But it sounded more like maybe some of that battery acid was uh, conducting something and boiling off. Um, I guess it could have been some water from the soap and water also. But uh, it stopped shortly after and then the current went to zero. So it doesn't appear this thing's pulling any current. So I don't see anything happening. So um, I'm going to start tracing that and see where the voltages go. This is a quick update. I've been working on this for a few hours. And I've been tracing the power input here. So here's the battery. And um, this chip right here, I need to look up and figure out exactly what it does. Because on pin 7, it should be high according to the power logic over here in order for this to cut on. And it's going low as soon as you cut the power switch on. So here's all the power logic over here. And um, pin 10 is what's connected to that chip. And it has to be high and 9 has to be high in order for the output on 8 to be low. And you see it's power on on low. And everything else seems right. It's all working right. Except for um, that pin 10 is going low. So I actually was measuring pin 7 earlier and my meter lead slipped off and touched something and the machine beeped and then all of a sudden it was reading high so as soon as I cut it off and cut it back on it didn't happen again so something's going on here um, so I'm gonna look through that and see if I can figure that out okay so this is a comparator a comparator chip used for power detection in this circuit is what the chips list is a power detector so this transistor cuts on from the power switch. So as soon as the power switch cuts on, we should have 5 volts here, which will power the chip. And then there's a voltage divider here that will feed the a divided ratio of the input voltage into pin 1. So this chip has a um it has a hysteresis input. So it's looking for a certain voltage there, and as long as the voltage is high enough, then it'll cut that pin on. That pin's not cutting on so that voltage isn't getting high enough. Well I measured everything and everything's fine, the voltages are right, but that voltage is not getting to there. At least not consistently. So the two resistors in that circuit are R5 and R4. And in between them should be connected to pin 1. So if you look at the bottom of the board, R4 is right here and R5 is right there. And I have measured and this point on R4 is connecting to R5. So that's good. But if you see the trace here from R4, 
it travels down the board right here and then it goes to a via there is no connection between that via and there I can stick the meter in there and um, get a connection from there to there but I can't get a connection from there to there so either the trace on the other side of the board which is under the chip has failed or probably more, like, more likely that via has failed so it is in the area over here is the area where all the corrosion was that's pretty far away from it so maybe the via just failed or maybe some of the uh, battery acid made it into that via and ate it away so I'm going to put a jumper from pin 2 to R4 right there and we'll see if it works there is my jumper installed so I'm going to put everything or hook the ribbon cables back up and see if we get a beep okay power switch is off on the HX20 cut my 5 volt power source back on and we'll cut this on and see if we get a post beep and we did Let's see if it works again not that time well I did it twice that time so there's still more to it but I guess that explains why it worked one time randomly when I first powered it up when I got it so um it's definitely uh, something's fixed so I'll keep working on it okay so I got the board flipped back over so you can kinda see what I was doing so this is that chip and this is pin 2 you can see it's 0 volts let me get it my other hand 0 volts I forgot the power switch on now we get a little over 1 volt before I was just kinda getting random values there that was because it was floating but if we go over to pin 7 you can see there's a voltage on it now but as soon as I cut the power switch on it goes to 0 and it's supposed to go to 5 volts so that chip's still not happy so let me look at uh let me calculate what voltage is actually looking for on pin 2 maybe one of these resistors is out of spec so the threshold voltage is 1.2 on pin 2 you see we're getting 1.288 which is a uh, I think the upper end of the threshold is 1.25. It's on, um, according to my meter, it's uh, it's above it, but that's really tight. I've been feeding 1.9 volts into this because these are 1.2 volt cells, and there's four of them, so I should give like 4.8. But maybe, maybe they're actually a little higher when they're charged. Let me turn the voltage up a little bit and see if. 5.3 It's really hard to get accurate readings because the pins are kind of corroded. It really just looks like that chip's not functioning properly. It looks like all the signals going into it are right. So uh, I'll keep looking around on it, but it might just be a bad chip. So um, I have to get another one. But we can uh, we can rig it for now and make it work. So we can move on. So I'm going to look at it a little more, but we may end up just doing that. I've hooked my favorite little oscilloscope up. Let's look at these signals and make sure there's just nothing weird happening. This may be a clue. So that's the input. That looks good. And here's pin 7. And it's cutting on and off. Let's play with the input voltage while we have it on there and see if it stabilizes. So that's at 4.9. Right there at like 6 it cuts on. 5.5, 5 5.7, 5 5.8, 5 yeah, 5.96. So that chip right there is just out of spec. Unless the batteries are supposed to um, have that high a voltage when they're charged, but I'm not really sure they would. But now that we can actually make it cut on, in fact, let me turn it back up to 6.
it does consistently work above six. Um, now that we can make it cut on, let's uh, hook the LCD screen up and see how bad I messed that up. Okay, so the screen's connected. Let's cut it on. Well, there's stuff on the screen. Push down on it. It's changing when I push down on it, which means this bracket's really not pushing that screen down enough. It was probably working before because over time the rubber strip had just kind of glued to it. So I think we're about to get the cover back off and play around with it. Alright, so I took the cover off and if I press down on it, you can see it does say monitor and basic. I'm not pressing enough, but you can also still see it has this black block down here I was talking about. I saw that first time. So there's still something wrong with this board. Unfortunately, or maybe this LCD screen, but um, at least I can see it'll work if we can get it to make a good connection. Alright, I fiddled around with this thing for about an hour, moved it around, clean, kept cleaning the little rubber strip off and stuff, and I think I have it. I put it together and like one line wouldn't work or something, it was very frustrating, but it seems to be working now. Still have the big black square, so... I guess I'll play around and see if I can figure that out. Alright, so if you look at the schematic, there's the LCD screen. The rows, I guess, are all controlled by this one, number zero. And uh, and then all the columns, the columns are broken into six sections, so three across the top and three across the bottom. And if you look at what's happening, it's about a third of the screen on the bottom. So I'm guessing it is... Number three is our problem. So this chip's probably bad, but uh, I'll at least hook it to the oscilloscope and see if there's anything obvious there. I mean, it could be, I guess, video memory too. I don't know how this actually works, but um, or how this machine works. But the fact that it's such a perfect square and it's right there is probably just a bad chip. So uh, I'll look into that. Maybe it's maybe it's missing a signal or something. I got the data sheet for these um, dot matrix drivers pulled up and this p first pin right here at the bottom right is the chip select pin which of course is required. These are um, SPI chips or some type of serial. I think it's SPI. So um, the way it works is it uh, enables the chip and then it sends it serial data and then it disables it and that way it allows it to send the same data to all the chips so you don't have to have separate wires for all the data and clock lines and you just enable the chip you want to talk to. So here's one that works. You see on the screen over here there's data while it's writing. And then if I go to this chip, which is the one that's responsible for that bottom left corner, it does that. It does it every time so it doesn't look like it's working. In fact, it kind of looks like it's trying to pull it down, but it's got a weak driver somewhere. So I need to trace that back to the main board and see what's responsible for pulling that down. Okay, so it comes into the main board on pin 10 right here. Let me try to hold it and cut it on. It should have that same signal. Get my hand out of the way. And we do. So if we get the schematic, pin 10 is at one label 3 right there. And if we follow it down, it goes into pin 11 of uh, 16G. Yeah, pin 11. So 16 G's right there, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so the third one. If we cut it on now, I think I have it on there good, let me try that again. And I'm in your way again. Let me I'll move you over here.
and we have data. So there seems to be a broken connection between those pins. Okay, so this is the other side of the board. Pin 10 is right there, and that's pin 11. You can actually see the whole trace on the board. I'll zoom in in a second, but if I go from there to there, I got it in beep mode. I definitely have no beep. And you can see the traces there. I don't see where anything's obviously broken. Let's see if I can get you closer so you can actually see it. So we're going from, I'm sorry, did it again, alright. So we're going from right here, see the trace goes along here, goes here, around there, and into 10. And this, I mean the solder joint doesn't look bad, so I'm not really sure where it broke. It almost looks like there might be a little something right there under the H, but um, Anyways, I'll put a jumper wire there and we'll see if the LCD screen works. I tried just touching up the solder joints, but it didn't didn't work, so 9, 10, 11 to 10. Bodge job number two. We'll see if the screen works. Okay, let's hook back up. Put power supply back on. Alright, looks like all the lines are working too. Man, I did not think we'd be able to fix that one. I thought I'd have to get a new screen. Okay, well kind of got, uh, got a little crazy with the screen there but um, it all worked out in the end I think the reflector using the aluminum tape is not the best but I'm not going to mess with that anymore and it's certainly readable so I think it's going to stay like that uh, as far as I can tell everything's working at the moment so um, of course we don't know if there's any bad memory or anything but um, I think I'm going to move on to making a battery pack but I'm going to do that tomorrow because I'm tired so I'll see y'all then so now the screen's pretty much working. I uh, scraped all that epoxy off of here to make sure that these weren't uh, broken earlier. I'm going to spray a little conformal coating on there just to make sure they don't short out to anything. And then I think we can kind of put that part back together. I am going to move on to the battery pack. So here's the battery cells I got. Just got them off of eBay. I don't know if they're any good. But um, the, uh, they're 2200 milliamp hour. And the ones that came on it you can't see this, but I believe they're, they're uh, 3,000 milliamp hour, so these won't quite have the life. But this thing's rated for like 50 hours or something, so I don't know how realistic that is. But um, these come with tabs already on them. kind of would have rather them not come with tabs on them so we can just spot weld our own on them. But I guess we'll spot weld these uh, tabs to the other tabs. And um, the wire, you can see the wire is really corroded. I have stripped these back. So I'm going to keep cutting them back and hopefully we'll find some nice copper. I imagine that's really probably the source of the power issues we were having before. It's just a bad connection to my to my power supply on those wires. But um, we'll keep doing that and I'll try to clean this connector up a little bit. Put some deoxid and scrub it or something. I've been cleaning this up and you know, it's hard to see the... Uh, the top right here isn't what actually makes the connection, but I had to clean that out because that's the part of the pin that's actually spring-loaded, I think. It pushes down on it. And uh, this one's still locked up in the in all the oxidation or corrosion, but this one's just gone. So it's completely corroded away. You can actually see the, the pin inside there. So it's definitely not making a good connection there. So I don't have one of these. I found this. It's an old buzzer. And um, it does have the correct pin spacing. It's not the same connector. But if I put it in this way, it does plug in. The little locking tab gets bent up. And uh, if you look at this original connector, you see it's like raised and then it kind of drops down right there. So if I just kind of... Uh, copy that shape as in get an exacto knife and cut from about a hundred thousandths or so back down it should lock in there so I'm gonna go with that for now yes yeah, pretty close to the same as far as height and everything so that's what we'll go with for now so I'm gonna use this connector on the battery pack 
So the gauge wire on this connectors on that connector is a lot thinner than than uh, what was on the original battery one. So I got some of this wire that I had, and um, I cut the wire off the pins, leaving about a you know three sixteenths of an inch of a wire and stripped the insulation off, and I soldered these wires on there. And uh, made sure and got it all the way soldered to the connector so it'd make a good electrical connection. And feel a little better about that. And uh, we'll put a little heat shrink over that. And hopefully we can snap them back in here and we'll have a, uh, some some good good thick wires coming out of the connector for the battery. Alright, so that's with the heat shrink on there. So there's a little tab sticking up the back right here. And that's what actually locks into the connector. I had to bend it down to get the connector out. So we'll just bend those back up a little bit. Hopefully it'll snap back into the connector. So let's see which way it goes. So the ridges are up like that. So the red one needs to go on this side. So I forgot it upside down now. Okay. So that's in. that's in. Let's just double check I did that right. Yep. Okay. Well, I was struggling with that spot welder, but I guess it was actually bad because um, after a couple more it, uh, it smoked. So I ended up having to solder it, which is not ideal. Um, since it had tabs on it, I could just solder tabs to tabs. So that was good, except for that first one I had messed with so much, I had ended up taking the tab off, thinking that maybe because I was trying to go from from a strip to a strip it was messing up, so I ended up soldering to one battery, which isn't isn't good. Hopefully the battery's not damaged. But um So we got uh this is our negative and that's our positive. So here we should have close to five volts. Somewhere around five volts. If I did it right. Yeah, 5.1. So um, I'll solder the wire onto the end of it. I'll see if I have some heat shrink big enough to go around that. If not, I'll have to use tape. But then we can try it and we can see if that circuit, that power circuit we were having trouble with is uh, going to be an issue or if that was more just related to these wires being oxidized. So I'll get the wire soldered on there and finish this battery up. Now you can kind of see what I did. I, I bent the, so the tabs were coming off this way. So I bent, them, bent this one up and bent that one that way, turned it around and soldered them. So basically they were beside each other, uh, like one was here and one was here and the tabs were com both coming up, soldered them together and then I bent the, bent the whole thing straight which bent the tab under it so you can see it's kind of going back and forth in there. And that way it, uh, it's not rubbing against the side of the, of the battery here. So hopefully that'll be good. Not ideal. Um, I've never I have made these before. I've never had trouble with the spot welder. It usually just goes right together. So I think this I think the spot welder was just on its last leg, and uh, this is the one I was using. Like I said, I've, I've used it a bunch of times. Never really had trouble with it, but um, didn't work this time. I haven't had good luck with spot welder. And uh, the other one I have is over here. This is the original one I bought. I thought this one was really cool because it um, doesn't, you don't have to hook it to an actual 12 volt battery to make it work. It has a lithium ion battery in it. This never worked. I actually took it apart and started looking at it and the, um, it has a microchip microcontroller in it and uh, it appears it just wasn't programmed. It just wasn't doing anything. So I didn't go any farther to actually uh, see if there was a program on it or if it was damaged, but all the circuits seem fine. And uh, I thought I'd make a video on that, but I never did. I was going to kind of reverse engineer it and reprogram it. But anyways, so no good luck with spot welder. Maybe I should just make a nice one. All right, so I did not have any string crap that would fit that. So but anyway, that's it all together. And I did cut away that plastic there so it should snap in. So I was sticking the battery pack in here, and it doesn't quite fit. See, these um, wires are interfering with this piece of plastic here. So I think that the batteries need to be rotated so the wires come up instead. Um, 
So I need to modify that battery pack if that stops it from closing. If not, I'll probably just leave it like it is. So it's sitting back together. The battery's plugged in. Definitely going to have to modify the battery. It won't go down all the way. But let's see if the power will cut on with the 4.8 or 5.1 or whatever voltage the battery pack was because remember we needed like 6 volts to make it cut on with the power supply so I don't know if that was an oxidation issue with the uh, power cable or if that power monitoring chip is out of spec so I'll cut it on now yeah it cuts on fine so I think we were just having issues with um with the power connection on that oxidized wire but uh yeah it seems to be working that's awesome um Yeah, keys. I have to go through all the keys and see if they work. But anyway, I'm going to work on that battery pack. And then um, I may go ahead and end the video here because it's actually taking a lot longer than I thought. I thought we were just going to kind of make a battery and clean it up. But we still have the printer mechanism to go through. We'll at least have to lube it up. Something just fell out of there. And uh, we have the tape deck. So I don't know if any of this stuff works may need to put a belt in there may not but um anyways thanks for watching so far and uh this will be part one and uh should be a part two out in about a week thank you